to try that once again. I say we are excited about Jesus. Come on, clap those hands in the joy of the Lord. Clap those hands in the people. Lift up to your voice unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Express your gratitude of God and God. He is worthy of our best friends. I trust that you have tuned in and you are ready for worship and the word. Be blessed now as our dance and music ministry ushers us into the presence of the Lord. If he's your all in all, won't you put your hands together with us? Come on, everybody. If you got two hands, put them together with us as we give God some praise on today. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I came to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. The song says this Oh, God is the joy and the strength of my life He moves all pain, misery and strife He promised to keep me and never to leave me Never ever come short of His word I have to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way my life mean every day I want to go with him when he comes back I come too far and I'll never turn back God is oh God is oh God is you to join in with us and sing it. God is, God is He moves all pain, all hurt. Hallelujah. He promised to keep it.
all. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We adore you. We magnify your name. You've been so good to us. Can you just lift your hands in the sanctuary and just tell the Lord you love him. Tell him thank you for another day. Tell him thank you for life. No matter what you're going through, God still gets the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good days, bad days. He's still worthy. And so we say, God, we love you. We adore you. And we magnify your name. Hallelujah. Come on, won't you sing this with us? Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. For you are good. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. You are good. You are good. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. You are good.
That's where I'm going to put my hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Hallelujah. I believe God. Yeah, you believe what you want to believe. <laughs> I believe God. Hallelujah. Well, come on, don't play with it. Come on, let it in. Come on. Come on. That's that's why we're here. That's that's why we're here. This is why we're here. To give his name the praise. And to see him move in the company of his people. Hallelujah. Now listen. Something, something is wrong if only the choir gets happy. I, I said something wrong if only the choir gets happy. But even as they were ministering to us, by way of song that it, it, it should have blessed your heart too even if you don't sing in the choir you did hallelujah yeah I believe God No excuses about praising the Lord. Yeah. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. Let's enjoy the Lord while we're here. joy of the Lord is our strength. Glory to God. Yes, oh Jesus. Ah. My, my, my. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. My soul cries out. I said, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. may not have gotten your dancing right there, but if I couldn't say a word, I'd at least wave my hands. <laughs> yes, Lord. Uh, Lord, you're so good. You're so kind. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Glory to your name. I greet all of you in the spirit of love and peace. It is good to be in the Lord's house. Perhaps I am a bit biased, but when it comes to church in the city of Atlanta, there's just no place like New Beginning. I understand that that may sound a little biased to some, but I am fully... I'm fully under that persuasion 
Again, I greet all of you in the spirit of love and peace. Good to see you in the Lord's house. To all of our visitors, if you would please stand. We just want to love on you. We want to show our appreciation in a corporate way for you being here with us today. All of our visitors, please stand. Wonderful. Come on, New Beginning. Let's praise God. For our visitors, we are so grateful. So grateful to have all of you here. It is my prayer, even right after the service, I'll get an opportunity to shake your hand and greet you even more formally. But again, we're great, grateful, grateful to have you here with us. Again, to Tanisha, good to see you, girl, and some other Timothy members who are sprinkled throughout the congregation. We give God praise for you. Um, before we give out our certificates to our new members and those who have uh, finished uh, the boot camp orientation, uh, let me uh, very quickly remind everyone, and I'm, I'm searching, I thought I had all of this in my notes, but I want to remind everyone about uh, the women's ministry and the gathering that will take place this Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Yes, that's the time here in the fellowship hall. The women will be coming together for a spring affair, and I know that it's going to be incredible. We thank God for our first lady and the manner in which she is leading the women's ministry. I so, I so appreciate Amen. Darlene, all that you're doing and sharing with the women, we praise God for you. And again, I know that you guys are going to have a wonderful time this Saturday right here in the Education Building at 1130. Also, I believe, and I'll, I'm looking for one of my boys to mend Ken. Yeah, I see Ken in the back. I believe, are we ready to purchase tickets today? Maybe not. I see that pause. All right, we'll be ready next Sunday. Yeah, let's be ready next Sunday, all right, Kim, to, uh, to get our plans ready for the Boys to Men Banquet, and we're looking forward to that as it is planned to take place on next month. Amen. We'll talk more, Kim. But again, I'm excited about all that the Lord is doing in our ministry. Amen. Let's recognize now some of our new members. Amen. These are the individuals... The ones that are in the plaque, they're the individuals that have completed boot camp, am I right? These are new members, new members. Uh, Janaya Chandler, where's Janaya? Is she here? Is Janaya? Amen. All right. She's, if we have a representative for her today, yeah, you come in and stand in for her as we prepare to take this. Tysina Reed, I think I'm pronouncing that first name correctly. Tysina Reed. Amen. If she's here, Tatiana, Tatiana. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I remember when our teachers used to say, I can't pronounce these new names, but uh, we praise God. All right. Yeah. Stand in for her. Stand in for her. We're going to take a group picture here momentarily. And um, yeah, Greer. Last name Greer. Amen. I don't want to mess up. But, yeah, I want to mess up. Martuez, I told y'all I'm getting old. I feel like my daddy up here. Amen. Come on, let's give him another big hand. We're grateful. So glad to have you, man. And that's, okay, the ones in the envelope. All right, that's it for today. Come on, let's take a group picture. Wonderful, y'all. Y'all come center right here. Let's, yeah, okay. Well, Jazz, you can take it from that angle. Wonderful. Come on, New Beginning. Let's praise God again for our new members. We are excited about how the Lord is growing the church. Even on Resurrection Sunday, we had 12 new converts. And uh, I'll mention their name on next Sunday. But again, we're grateful for all that the Lord is doing in our midst. Let's prepare now to bless the Lord by way of giving. And we're enthusiastic even during the offering because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. If today is your tithing Sunday, I'm going to ask now if you would stand with your tithe in your hand. 
please, ma'am, please, sir, we lead the way with our tithe because the Bible requires that before we do anything else. He says, bring unto me uh, the tenth, bring it into the storehouse so that there might be meat in my house. Prove me, test me. He says, see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing, watch this, that you will not have room enough to receive. Amen. We thank God for the faithful tithers of the new beginning for Gospel Baptist Church. And we're believing God for a 100% tithing church. When we tithe, that does not mean that we give the same thing. But we all make the same sacrifice. Amen. If today is not your tithing Sunday, you're going to give your offering. I want you to stand at this time. Everyone, stand with your offering in your hand. We never come into the Lord's house empty-handed amen i'm still waiting amen tithers and those who are giving your offering if you would please stand all right i believe we're prepared to give now let's lift our gifts before the lord heavenly father we thank you now for this opportunity to sow god we're grateful for the privilege that you have given unto us to put good seed in good ground father we believe now that a harvest is coming our way it's coming to our church corporately and to our house individually thank you now god for bringing increase to our seed it is in jesus name we pray that the people of god say amen, amen. if you would please those to my right and my left if you would just please follow the lead of the ushers as we bring our gifts unto the lord
Amen. Boy, every Sunday, the level of excellency and clarity and consistency that goes forth with our music ministry, amen, it's just to be appreciated. We thank God for our minister of music, Minister Luther Barnes. Come on, let's praise God for him. Yeah, we have many others, obviously, who contribute to the success of our choir, but amen. It all starts with the director, if you will, the minister of music. And uh, we're, just, we're just appreciative of him. If you would pray for me, or pray with me rather. Heavenly Father, we, we're grateful. Grateful that you have afforded us yet another privilege to gather together to lift up your name in the beauty of holiness. There are many of us here in the sanctuary and there are many who are watching virtually, but God, we've all tuned in with the same intent in mind. And that is that we might feel and witness your presence and so that we might hear a word from you. Speak, Lord. Have your way with us. Whatever you shall do or say, we'll give you all glory, honor, and praise for it. For it is in the name of Jesus we do pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Again, I greet all of you in the spirit of love and peace. God bless all of our elders and ministers who share in the gospel with us. On last Sunday, I shared with you, um, and I prefaced the message in that I wanted you to understand that the motivation and the thrust behind it was due to pastoral care. And you know, whenever you've been an evangelist for so many years, whenever you start pastoring, you quickly learn that the mode and the thrust behind your preaching has to shift. Because your intent as a pastor is not to just get the people happy every Sunday. But your intent is to assure them that God is walking with them wherever they are and certainly to help propel them to the place that God would have them be. So again, uh, I have the same motivation and, and that motivation is always the same but, but I'm, I'm letting you know that um, verbally that uh, I, I hear you and I feel you in the spirit. And, and I really want you to press in, if you will, and lend your ear and your heart as the Lord speaks to us by way of his word on today. Let's look together at Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 through 26. That's where we're going to focus our attention. Lamentation, by and large, is not what one considers to be a popular book. But the beginning, at least, of this passage is somewhat familiar to the ears of the church. Lamentations 3, verses 21 through 26. Here is how it reads from the New King James Version. And this is Jeremiah talking. He says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. He goes on to say in verse 24, the Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him. Here is where the weight of the preaching will lie, 
verse 25 says, The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him. Verse 26 conclude the matter by saying it is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Listen again, if you will, at verse 25, it says, The Lord is good to those who wait for Him. Just as I did on last Sunday, I want to share with you, by way of the subject, entitled, I would wait if I were you. Hallelujah. I want you to get your best sanctified look on your face and look at somebody on your row. Make eye contact with them and tell them, if I were you, I would wait. Come on. Yeah, I, I would wait. I would wait. I really would. I would wait. If I were you. We're going to preach this part two. I, I would wait. If I were you. Jeremiah. Uh, Elder Paul is one of the Old Testament's most interesting major prophets. His ministry covered a period of time before and after the fall of Jerusalem. And for many years, he warned the people that God would send the Babylonian armies to punish them for their ongoing, unrepentant, ungodly behavior. Because his ministry consisted of rebukes and warnings, he became extremely unpopular. Yeah, you know, he was not one of these prophets who every time he showed up told the people they were going to get a new house or a new car. He was one of these prophets who constantly and over and over again preached repentance and warned the people that their hearts as well as their behaviors needed to change and do so quickly. Because he had a ministry of warnings and rebukes, he was hated by kings, by priests, by other prophets, and the citizens of Jerusalem. Because, again, he, he did not tickle their fancy. He did not just show up and tell them what they wanted to hear. And because he did not minister in that fashion, he became unpopular to many. After you read the book of Jeremiah and make your way over to the following book that he off authored, which is Lamentation, uh, all of his prophecies, all of the prophecies that Jeremiah had prophesied had come to pass. Because of unrighteousness, Jerusalem has been destroyed by its enemies. Throughout the book of Lamentations, Jeremiah explains that Jerusalem's fall was God's punishment for the people's unrepentant sin. However, while preaching this message, he, he prays that God would show mercy to his people. In Jeremiah's writings, there are two noticeable themes. The first is this, uh, that we must persevere in proclaiming the gospel even when the gospel is not popular. And you know, I, I'm saying this to, to preachers who are present and preachers who are watching, to all of my colleagues who are endeavoring to do the will of God, you must not be baited uh, 
with the temptation of the approval of man as it relates to the popularity and the necessity of your ministry. Because the Bible says that men will have itching ears. So we must learn how to preach the gospel in season and out of season. Yeah, preach it when the church is full and preach it when it's not so full. Preach it when they are applauding you or preach it when they choose to say ill will against you. Again, one of the themes that quickly leaps from the book of Jeremiah is that we must persevere in preaching the gospel even when the gospel is being ridiculed. And the second theme is that we must trust God even when disaster strikes because God has a plan that's worth waiting on. Yeah, if you wanted an early shout, you missed your cue right there. Uh -huh. I said even when disaster strikes, even when we are dealing with circumstances that appear to be uh, not favorable, yeah. uh, we must still continue to trust God. Right. Because he has a plan. I said he has a plan that's worth waiting for. Uh, in order for us to further appreciate uh, this text and, and what is happening here in the life and the ministry of Jeremiah. Let's, 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 let's do a deep dive real quick into the context of, of this time and of this era. And, and to get a better appreciation of that, we have to go back to chapter number one of Lamentation and look at at least verses 15 through 17. It, it gives us there a description of what has now taken place in the life of God's people. It says in verse 15, uh, it says, The Lord has trampled underfoot all my mighty men in my midst. He has called an assembly against me to crush my young men. The Lord trampled as in a wine press the virgin daughter of Judah. For these things, Jeremiah says, I weep. My eye, my eye overflows with, all, with water because the comforter who should restore my life is far from me. My children are desolate because the enemy prevailed. He goes on to say in verse 17, Zion spreads out her hands, but no one comforts her. The Lord has commanded uh, concerning Jacob that those around him become his adversaries. Jerusalem has become an unclean thing among them. Even if you read over into chapter number two, and if you uh, have time to focus in on verse 15, it further speaks of the devastation there. It says, all who pass by clap their hands at you. They hiss and shake their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem. Here is what they say. They say, is this the city that is called the perfection of beauty? The joy of the whole earth? Jerusalem was in shambles. The mighty men were destroyed. The young men had been forced into slavery. The young women had been violated. The infrastructure of the city had been demolished and their economy had plummeted. It was bad, y'all. Real bad. And when you arrive at where our text uh, comes from today, uh, you see Jeremiah he is crying because of the conditions that he and the people of God are now facing. He's weeping. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. Uh, when you read all of those verses, Jeremiah, he's, he's crying. He is lamenting. 
that is where this particular book gets its name lament or lamentation it means to cry to grieve sorrowfully those of you who are bible scholars you know that jeremiah is even known as the weeping prophet he grieves he grieves for the people of god he grieves because as he looks around throughout the city and throughout the land there is no physical indication that God is still yet alive. As a matter of fact, when you look at the beginning of this chapter and read verses 1 through 5, uh, you hear the lament in his voice. He says, I am a man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Surely... He has turned his hand against me time and time again throughout the day. He has aged my flesh and my skin and broken my bones. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and woe. It was bad, people of God. And you know, nothing is more challenging when you, as the voice of God to the people of God, see the people that you pray for and love suffer. Uh, Jeremiah was not just the prophet of, of this day, but, but you must also think of him in context, uh, in the context rather, of a pastor, the people that he loved, the people that he endeavored to minister to the people that he endeavored to see God's perfect will in their life are now suffering greatly. And he cries when he looks at the devastation that has come upon them. But when he gets to verse 21, Everything begins to make a shift. Again, reading the book that bears his name, Jeremiah, and, and reading Lamentations, uh, chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, and, and verses uh, 1 through 20, and chapter 3, the man of God is constantly crying, grieving over what now God has allowed to come upon his people. But again, when he comes to verse 21, everything, Dr. Mazak, begins to take a shift. He says in verse 21, this, watch it, I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. See, in order for you to appreciate verse 21, you must understand the context in which this statement is being made. There, there's, there's no, if we were to think about it in our day and time, there's, there's no grocery store to go get groceries. The gas stations are closed. There's, there are no employers to hire employees. The, the economy has plummeted. Everything that you could imagine has gone bad. But in the midst of seeing how things had become. Jeremiah says, I, I, I understand what's going on. I see the devastation in the land, but this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Uh -huh. Again, he goes on, he goes on to say, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Uh, his mercies are new every morning. 
You see, while uh, making an observation of everything that has gone wrong, Jeremiah begins to remember that I've seen bad times before. I've seen devastation before. I've seen sickness before. Therefore, I recall to my mind. Uh, if you would, just, just, just wake your neighbor up, make sure they stay in the car, and tell a neighbor, I still remember. Uh, I, I've, I've had some rough times in my life. I've had moments and seasons where things did not quite come together. But even in the midst of facing sickness right now, even in the midst of facing challenges right now, this, I recall to my mind. I remember what God did for my grandmama them. I remember what God did for my mama them. I remember what God has done for me. As a matter of fact, as I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say, I am blessed. I have a testimony. I came to tell you today, right through here, you don't need the blessing right now. What you need to do right now is remember. You need to recall to your mind. Rather than pressing fast forward, you need to hit rewind. And remember that God made a way in 1995. He made a way in 2000. He made a way in 2010 and 2015. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. This, I recall. Y'all take your seats. We're just talking. We're just going to talk for a little while. This, I recall to my mine therefore I have hope again again everything prior to verse 21 is just weeping and wailing but at verse 21 everything takes a change Jeremiah has in verse 21 what we call an epiphany An epiphany, an epiphany is an intuitive grasp of a reality. An epiphany is an illuminating discovery. It's a realization. It is to be able to grasp a disclosure. From a biblical perspective, uh, an epiphany is a manifestation of the supernatural divine capabilities of God. An awakening. An epiphany is a revelation about your situation. Uh, although you have seen devastation, you are about to witness a manifestation of God's glorification. That's, 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 that's an epiphany, yes. I know what it looks like. Yes, I see the circumstances. But when you have an awakening, when you have an epiphany, again, you get a revelation about your situation. And although you see devastation, you begin to rejoice because you're getting ready to see a manifestation of God's glorification. So I told you a few minutes ago, you need to remember. And once you begin to remember you then began to have an epiphany. And might I go a little bit further to tell you that many of the saints that you sit beside every Sunday, it ain't that everything is perfect in their life. Can I? Because sometimes we watch the folk who go forth in worship and we say to ourselves, oh, you know, they must just got a breakthrough. 
they shouting because they just got something. Preach festivals. But let me give you some insight. A lot of folk that show up here every Sunday morning and who tune in online, they ain't shouting because they got something. They're not shouting because they physically have something in their hand. But many folks shout because they got an epiphany. Can I let you in on something? There are some folk who showed up last Sunday with a diagnosis of cancer. Came back this Sunday and the cancer is still there. There are some people who came to church last Sunday, got trouble all in their home. And since last Sunday, the trouble got worse. There are some people right now who are listening to my voice that was in debt on last Sunday. And here we are again today, you're still in debt. But the reason they shout and the reason they run and the reason they give God praise is because they come to the conclusion that trouble don't last always. If you would witness the three people and tell them, I've got an epiphany. I know what it looks like. I know what it feels like. But guess what? I had an awakening. Because I've had an awakening, therefore, I recall to my mind, it's, it's an epiphany. It's, it's, it's inside information about a later on manifestation. Hallelujah. I wish I could see the 25 folk that ain't got it yet. But God already told me that everything is going to be all right. And you shouting on the everything going on. To have an epiphany is to have inside information concerning a later on manifestation. Oh, come on, I got to wrap this up. We got to wrap it up. See, 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 you got to have an epiphany. Even, even though it, it ain't changed yet. Because God always changes your mind before he changes your feet. He got to get your mind together right. You, you got to see it in your mind. Before you can actually obtain it with your hand. So, 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 so he grants unto us inside information concerning a later on manifestation. It's an epiphany. See, 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 once, once, once you have your epiphany, you then began to have hope uh, see, oftentimes when we're trying to encourage people and even as a pastor when I when I'm uh, counseling people I have learned I've learned and and I've, I've made I've made mistakes in this regard whereby I tried to give people hope before I led them into an epiphany and see if you give hope ahead of an epiphany then you have a two hour conversation that'll just go in one ear and come out the other. Because after all that hope you've pumped into them because they, their mind has not been awakened to the bigger picture, everything you've said falls on deaf ears. But once the awakening or the epiphany precedes the experience, then you can have Bonafide hope. See, that's, that's one of the reasons we gather for corporate worship is so that we can get an epiphany, so that we can get revelation. Because
because information without revelation leads to spiritual constipation. Well, you just shout and ain't nothing coming out. But see, when you get a revelation about your information, then you leave here with hope. Yeah, yeah. So, because my mind has been awakened, I now have a posture of hope. I know, I know, I know to many, to many, hope don't sound like much. But, but, but I often think of hope as a starter kit. Hope going to put you back up on your feet. Hope going to get you started. See, see, sometimes when somebody blessed you, when, when, when they blessed you last month and helped you pay your car note, that don't mean they're going to pay it next month. They paid it this month to give you some hope. You got it. As a matter of fact, look at your neighbor and tell them, I ain't paying it next month now. Just pay. I paid it this month to give you some hope. is a starter kit. Hope puts you back on your feet. It helps you to assume a posture whereby you can now readily see what God is about to do. And I like the way I believe it is Romans 5 and 5 that says hope does not make you shame. Hope does not disappoint. Hallelujah. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I go back uh, 20 years or so now? You know, there were many Sundays where, where I, I made my way here to New Beginning, believing God for various things. And it wasn't that God wasn't here. It wasn't that the word did not go forth, but what I was believing God for didn't happen that day. But I did leave here with some hope. Hallelujah. I need you to understand that what you are looking for God to do, it may happen today. It may not happen today. But if you leave here with some hope, you then put yourself in a position to receive what God has for you. I'm here today as a living witness that hope won't make you shame. Yeah, you stop worrying about what God doing for somebody else. Their timing is their timing. Stop trying to keep up with somebody else. You're not in their race. When you stand on what God has promised you, will not make you ashamed. I, I got to hurry on. Uh, uh, you see, you see, again, the text, the text says this. I tell you, hope sets you up. Uh, and verse 25 goes on to say, the Lord is good to those who wait for him. See, see, hope won't get you back on your feet. And then hope enables us to wait. You got it. Because it's hard to wait when you don't have no hope. Preach folks. But now that I've got a revelation concerning my situation, I've had an epiphany. I now have hope. And because I now have hope, I'm in a better position to wait. Again, verse 25 says the Lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul who seeks him verse 26 goes on to say it is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord uh, so much is said right there first of all you, you, you just can't read by verse 25 and, and not want to rejoice 
For the Lord is good to those who wait for him. Yeah, I got, I got 12 more minutes. I, I, I'm going to launch it back out there. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. I'll wait. I'll wait. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. The Lord is real good. Do I have a witness to those who wait on him? And, and he goes on to say something that, that becomes perhaps even more beautiful in verse 26. He said, it is good that one should hope and wait quietly. If you love your neighbor, and I know you do, look at him, amen, with a Jesus smile on your face and tell him, you may be talking too much. Come on, tell him you may be talking too much. Matter of fact, tell three people, you might be talking too much. Because one of the worst ways to destroy your own peace is to start talking too much. Have you ever had the Holy Ghost tell you, you know what, you need to zip it. You talk too much. You must learn how to quietly wait on the Lord. Many times we disturb our own peace because we talking too much. And sometimes we're talking too much because we're trying to impress folk that ain't even paying us no attention. We're talking too much because we're trying to keep up with what God is doing with somebody else. And you feel the need to keep talking about it because you got to keep up with somebody else. But when you learn how to quietly wait, God will do exceedingly abundantly above all which you could ask or even think hallelujah I'll just wait here quietly while others are running about doing this and that I'll just wait right here quietly while others are uh, seemingly getting theirs ahead of me I I'll, I'll shout and dance with them but I'm not going to try to disrupt what God is doing for them because he's yet to do it for me. I'll just quietly wait. I've got nine minutes left. Uh, you may ask, Pastor Rose, if I'm going to wait, what am I waiting on? I'm so glad you asked. The text says that you're waiting on the salvation of the Lord. Oftentimes when we think of salvation, we, we just think about when we got saved. But salvation is even more than that. Salvation is not just the redemption of the soul, but it is a redemption of everything that belongs to the people of God. So while I wait, I'm waiting to see salvation. Uh, I'll give it to you another way. I think you can further appreciate it. When you look at the etymological makeup of the word salvation, it is, uh, or should I say, it encompasses the root word salvage. Stay with me. You cannot experience salvation unless there is something that needs to be salvaged. All right, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still talking about Jeremiah's context. Everything was in disarray. And even when we bring this ancient text into our modern day and time, again, you cannot experience salvation unless there is something that needs to be salvaged. You're looking at me a little bougie. Uh, uh, all right, I'll, I'll pitch it to you another way. Uh, 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 
perhaps at some point in time you've had to visit the salvage yard. All right, you're still looking at me like you live in Buckhead. Um, uh, uh, if, if you didn't call it the salvage yard, you call it the junkyard. Come on. And everything in the junkyard looks like a total mess. But there you were. You, you were determined. You were determined to hold on to your 1995 Honda Accord. You said, you know what? I'm going to drive this thing till the wheels fall off because I don't want no more car payments. And you went up to the Honda dealership and told them that you needed a new bumper. And they told you because of the age of the car. We no longer carry that particular part. But they referred you to Jerusalem. I mean, to the junkyard. They referred you to the salvage yard and said, if you go see uh, so-and-so off of 285, he's got a junkyard over there, and he may be able to help you out with your 1995 Honda Accord. And here you were. You pulled up to the junkyard, and when you got there, everything looked like a mess. You said, there's no order here. There's, there's, no, there's no assessment of what's on the yard. But, but you went on into the office, and you told the manager, I got a 1995 Honda Accord, and I need a bumper. And to your surprise, the manager flipped through what they call a catalog. And he flipped through his catalog and he said, you know what? Today is your day. On row 187, section C, I got a 1995 Honda Accord. And there you were. You made an assumption that everything out there was in disarray. You made an assumption that everything out there was a piece of junk. You made the assumption that didn't nobody know anything about what was organized on the junkyard. But here is God saying, I understand your disarray. I understand your devastation. You see, God is so in tune with us that the Bible says that he has every hair on our head numbered. When you comb your hair this morning, when one strand fell off, heaven took account of it. So God knows everything about you. He knows that you're in foreclosure. He knows that you're facing bankruptcy. He knows what your children are dealing with. But God said, if you just show up in the office and tell me all about your trouble, I'll let you know that in row 187, section C, I got just what you need. I showed up to tell somebody today, if I were you, I'd wait on the Lord. I know it's troubling. I know it's devastating. But he that has got a good work in you is able to perform it. I came to tell you, I have been young. Now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he's seen begging for bread. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. If I you. I would wait. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait, I say. I say, wait. Wait, I say, on the Lord. 
There may be somebody here today. You need to experience the salvaging of the Holy Spirit. I, I know you said, Pastor Bo, man, my life is in shambles. Everything is in disarray. When I look over the landscape of my life, it looks like a junkyard. But I, I pray that you understand that the Lord knows all about it. And he's able to salvage those wrecked parts of your life. If you're here today and you're in need of salvation, church discipleship, rededication, or the infilling of the Holy Spirit, I don't want you to waste any time. I want you to make your way down to the altar. I, I, I wouldn't make the mistake that you've been making thus far, and that is trying to fix yourself. Oftentimes we said, you know, when I get myself together, come back to the Lord. You just going to make things worse. He is the only one that can fix you and salvage your records. If you would just help me out, rest your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Repeat these words after me. Say, Lord, I pray for the person who I touch and agree with if they have a need in their life to go to the altar when this prayer is over I pray they will go in Jesus name now look at that person you just prayed for and ask them do you need to go to the altar I want you to wait for a response if they said yes tell them you don't have to go, by, go to the altar by yourself I'll gladly walk with you I see you coming, my brother. Come on. If y'all pray, I believe they will come. Others are coming. Others are coming. Come on. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Oh, my brother. Hallelujah. We are Christ to you. Oh, my sister. sing that once again because I believe the Spirit of the Lord is still moving upon the heart of someone here today. Come on, we offer Christ to you. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on you. Yes, Lord. Oh, my brother. Hallelujah. I see you coming, my brother. I was waiting on you. Come on, new beginning. If y'all pray, I believe they will come. Hallelujah. Oh, my sister. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful for the, what the Lord is doing in our midst. We're going to minister to those who come to the altar. But I, I, want, I want you all to reassure those who have come because they've made a bold step today. They made a bold step. But everybody that's sitting in those pews behind you who made the same decision that you're making today, they will attest to the fact that their life was a wreck. Things were all messed up. But they found salvation because the Lord salvaged that thing that was all bent out of shape. I, I, I want y'all to help them a little bit. 
if the Lord saved you and you glad about it come on and give him a praise in the house come on I want y'all to hear matter of fact tell somebody this is what salvation looks like this is what this is what being salvaged this is what it looks like this is what it looks like if either one of you came today because you want to give your life to the Lord you said pastor I don't know a whole lot about God I don't know a whole lot about the Bible but one thing I do know I want to be saved I want to be a Christian if I'm talking to either one of you as it relates to salvation I just want you to stand up on that first step if that's your case God bless your son God bless your daughter God bless you hallelujah I pray my brother you came thank God for Fernandez he he came today because he want to rededicate his life to the Lord come on come on there ought to be a better praise in the house than that hallelujah yeah this this message was for those who need to rededicate and Fernandez even when we make a mess of things even after we're saved because oftentimes we talk about the sins we committed before we got saved. But we don't talk about the things we've done since we've been saved. But God is a redeemer of all things. And we praise God for your restoration even now. But this young lady and this young man who have come today because they want to give their life to the Lord. I just want you to repeat these words after me. Say, oh God, I believe. That your son Jesus, that your son Jesus died, for my sin. died for my sin. And on the third day, and on the third day, he rose. He rose with all power. With all power. In his hand. In his hand. Lord. Lord. Fill me. Fill me. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. And I will serve you. And I will serve you. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You believe what you just prayed? You believe that prayer? You believe that prayer? Then the Lord just salvaged you. Come on, let's give God praise for these two. Hallelujah. We thank him. We thank him for what he is doing in our midst. I want the three of you all to, amen, go with Brother Huff. We're going to get some information from you. We're going to just make sure we, we get you anchored. Amen. Y'all, y'all need a church home too. Yeah. You don't have to join New Beginning, but New Beginning is a good place to join. <laughs> so they're going to minister to you a little bit further in the back so that we make sure that you are properly connected. Come on, New Beginning, let's praise God for what he has done in our midst. We give him the glory. Let us all stand. Again, let's not forget out this Saturday the women's ministry uh, they will be meeting up in the fellowship hall at 11:30, and there is a QR code amen I'm sorry I missed that yeah it's, it's free amen but we want everyone to scan that QR code or go on our church website and register that way we have an accurate head count and and can prepare appropriately amen and we're also praying uh, again for, for Kayla and Monica, as many of you know. And, and, and Tim was just an incredible soul and a brother to all of us. And we love, we love Tim. So we're going to keep our ear to the ground as it relates to uh, the place and time of his homegoing service. Yeah, Kayla, come here, baby. Let's, let's pray for Kayla real quick. And, yeah, Monica, you come on up with her and yeah. Amen. Yeah, we we it's what we do. We're new beginning. Amen. And, you know, Kayla was the apple of her father's eye. He loved her and she loved him. Come on, I need all of the there you go. Yeah, let's surround her. 
Let's lift her up, First Lady. Yeah, let's all touch and agree with her. Amen. Everyone, just stretch your hands this way. Heavenly Father, we pray now for all of Tim's family. God, we, we pray for Kayla on today. God, we pray for Monica as well. Father, we pray that you comfort them as only you can do. Father, we pray that you minister to their spirit. Father, as you minister to their spirit and, and as you comfort Kayla, help her to know, if she doesn't know, know it immediately, but help her to know in time that you do all things well. God, we thank you for Tim. Thank you for all the laughs that we shared and every smile he put on our face. We loved our brother. And we're grateful, Lord, that you gave him to us, but you have now seen fit to call him back unto yourself. So comfort our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If y'all just hug on a little bit, show us some love. And everyone else, if you would, just greet somebody, squeeze them real tight, and tell them, I would wait if I were you. Come on, tell them that. God bless you all. I look forward.